Thank you everyone for coming out for today's bell ringing for peace ceremony. Um, I just want to say that I don't know if anyone would want to have the seats for our speakers. It's pretty cold out here, but if you would like to take a seat, we have provided them for you. Uh, same for the audience out there. Um, do, has Leisha arrived yet? Oh. <laughs> so we're going to hear a musical selection now from Miss Leisha Gray. I was asked to sing the national anthem, so I want to turn towards the flag in respect. <clears throat> Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we watched, were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets begin things with our invocation. I'd like to invite Bishop Willie Schofield to the podium. <coughs> May we bow our heads as we reflect back on the life and the legacy Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., let us pray. Dear Father, as we approach your throne today, we give thanks to the only wise God, our Savior. Lord, make us an instrument of your peace. If there's hatred, let us show love. If there's injury, May we pardon. Where there's doubt, give us faith. Where there is despair, give us hope. Where there's darkness, give us light. Where there's sadness, give us joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, not so much to be understood as to understand, not so much to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we awake to eternal life. Divine Master, we thank you for your faithfulness, even though we are not faithful to you. Lord Jesus, we ask you to give us all 
around peace in our nation, our government, our state, our world. Give us peace of mind and body, soul and spirit. Divine Master, the words you spoke to Solomon in Chronicles 714, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Heavenly Father, I believe that you hear us. I believe that you hear the orphan crying, the immigrant who has no home, the homeless that have no place to lay their head. Father, we need divine healing throughout this land. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always, by all means. The Lord be with you all. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Hello everyone. For those of you who have not met me, my name is Jill Upson. I'm the Executive Director of the Herbert Henderson Office of Minority Affairs and also the Chair of the Martin Luther King Jr. State Holiday Commission. The Commission is pleased to welcome you to this year's bell ringing ceremony. Martin Luther King Jr. ended his famous I Have a Dream speech with these words, let freedom ring. And when this happens, when we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. So with those powerful words in mind, each year we hold a bell ringing event to unify and to remember. Dr. King also said, there will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with new meaning, my country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where our fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. I'd like to invite several people up to give comments, but first we're going to hear from our uh, United States Senator, the Honorable Ms. Shelley Moore Capito. So you'll be happy to know my fellow Senator uh, Joe Manchin leaned over to me and he goes, what's your speech, about 20 minutes? That's about the same as mine. It's an honor to be here. Jill does such a, a wonderful job with the commission and all those commissioners that are dedicated not just to this day, but to the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. every day here in the state of West Virginia. So thank you, Jill, for what you're doing. It's, it's truly inspirational. And I want to thank all of y'all for being here. If you weren't at the church service earlier, um, you've got to make sure you come next year. Because what I think was in, became planted in my heart very uh, deeply uh, is the, the legacy of, of Dr. King and, and of love and unity and and courage and strength and hope and I said the challenge is leaving the church so inspired to carry that legacy with you but now that we're outside the church actually carrying that legacy with us every day and 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 dedicating ourselves to his memory and his legacy so I'm very pleased to be here I think West Virginia has a wonderful appreciation for struggle a wonderful appreciation for equality and unity and and love for one another and and lifting a hand up to helping those who can't help themselves i want to thank the legislature for what they're doing right now to do that uh, as we speak 
A Dr. King once said, I have decided to stick with love. I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. May we all keep that in our hearts today, and may our actions bear us out. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Governor. Next, we're going to hear from our other United States Senator, the Honorable Joe Manchin. Thank you so much, Jill, and I appreciate all of you coming today. I'm reminded of John Kennedy, 1963, June 20th, on those steps, when he said, the sun might not always shine in West Virginia, but the people do. Amen. And that's pretty special about who we are and what we're really honoring today is Martin Luther King, Jr. As Shelley said, the, uh, the service was very inspirational. It was a great service. We've been to quite a few of them, but this one was absolutely unbelievable, the way it was presented, the way it was conducted. And it reminds us of one thing that Martin Luther King says, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. When you think about what our purpose is, those of us in public service, all of us who care about each other, Martin Luther King preached one thing, unity. Unity is all he preached. We all come together. We're all equal. In God's eyes, we're all equal, and we shall all be equal in each other's eyes, too. We don't absolutely condone any type of discrimination, any way, shape, form, no matter where, no matter how. And that's who we are as West Virginians. We're in a divided country right now in a troubled world. It's all of us responsibility to pull together. Every one of us have a responsibility to be civil with each other, to have civil discourse, but be able to come together and have a main purpose and a common goal to make West Virginia a better place and create opportunities for everybody. So I keep thinking about those days uh, when Martin Luther King was, as a, I, I have a dream uh, and, and his mountain speech and all the different things he said, which resonated, but more pronounced now than they were then, more needed now than they were then, of us coming back together as a country. So I want to thank all of you, uh, and we can't remain silent. We must be resilient, we must come together. I tell the legislator here, we have a divided country, we don't want a divided state. It's up to you all to bring it together. Democrats and Republicans working as one, West Virginia. And that's what I'm hoping and praying for this day. We'll never let that dream die, and the dream still lives on in Martin Luther King's uh, legacy lives on for all of us and in all of us. God bless you and God bless the great state of West Virginia. Amen. Thank you. And so before we go on, I do want to acknowledge that we do have a number of our esteemed legislators who took the, t the time to come down for this event, and I thank you. I appreciate you doing that. Next, we're going to hear from a representative from Congressman Alex Mooney's office, Ms. Susie Aceveda. Good afternoon. I too was at the church and that was just so inspirational. That song, Total Praise, will be in my head for days to come. I am not Congressman Mooney. I am his district rep, Susie Azevedo, and I'm pleased to be here on his behalf have some notes from him and I'm going to read them real quickly because I know you're all freezing. Dear friends, thank you for the invitation to participate in today's service. I am so sorry that I cannot be with you, but I wish you all a successful event. Thank you to our Executive Director of Minorities Affairs, Jill Upson, the West Virginia Martin Luther King State Holiday Commission, Asbury United Methodist Church, the Greater Kanawha Valley Foundation, and the West Virginia Cultural Center for making this event possible today. 56 years ago, Martin Luther King Jr. gave one of the greatest speeches ever delivered in our nation's capital. Today, his encouraging words of peace, love, and hope, and justice still rung loud. Dr. King once said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Dr. King spent his entire life challenging the inequality that runs rampant in our country and did so with dignity and grace. We have come a long way since the turbulent days of the 60s, but there is much more work to be done. On this celebration day of his birth, let us remember that Dr. King was a man convinced of the goodness and love in his fellow man. He wrote, we must develop and maintain the capacity to forgive. He who is devoid of the power to forgive is devoid of the power to love. There is some good in the worst of us and some evil in the best of us. When we discover this, we are less prone to hate our enemies. 
We must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. And again, we are not makers of history. We are made by history. It is only when we remember and correct the wrongs of history that we can confidently move forward to a brighter and more prosperous future for all of us. Dr. Dreams lives with us all. Thank you and God bless. Sincerely, Alex X. Mooney, Member of Congress. Next, we're going to hear from our Senate President, the Honorable Mitch Carmichael. Thank you. I'll be brief because I think the length of speeches should be in proportion to the temperature. And uh, so it should be brief. But we are gathered in the greatest country in the world, at the greatest capital in the United States of America. And these halls and this capital, as it's under construction, symbolize what this state was founded upon, freedom and equality. And that's what Martin Luther King Jr. stood for. And I think we should have take this opportunity, as we are doing now, to uphold that value, to always fight for that value, and to remember the sacrifices that were made for those who have gone before us for that principle of freedom, equality, and uh, equalness between all people, all mankind. We are all children of God, made in His image, and we should always recognize the value of each other, value one another better than ourselves, and uh, uphold those values as we move forward in rebuilding not only our uh, dome of our state capital, but our nation and our state to come together as one people. So thank you very much. So we are fortunate to have with us today someone who works very hard for our state, putting into practice the ideals of freedom, unity, and service. It is my honor to introduce him as he brings remarks for today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, the Governor of West Virginia, the Honorable James C. Justice. Thanks for everybody being here, especially our senators and our Senate president, legislatures, everybody. But you'll notice I don't have a script. I just would speak to you directly from my heart. I thank Jill Lupton for all she does in every way. I congratulate, I think her name, the young lady is Angela Gray. I absolutely want you to hear me today, and I'll be really brief. You know, Martin Luther King Jr., a long, long time ago, he gave everything. He gave his life because he had a dream. He had a dream. And that dream was full of God and love and all the goodness that we should be doing every day. Now, I want to tell you just this. I have a dream. I have a dream for a better West Virginia. And, and I'm working it with all my heart and soul. He expected me to have a dream. He expected me to have a dream. He expects you, every last one of you, to have a dream. A dream of a better, a better everything. A dream of love and a dream of God. Now I want to tell you just this. We've got so much to do. So much that he put us on a pathway and we're better. But we're nowhere complete. We've got so many that are hurting and so much to do and we need to get at it. So I would say to you, God bless in every way, shape, form, or fashion, and God bless Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and all that he did for us to put us on our way. Now let's all go and have a dream. Thank you, God bless. Amen. 
Okay, so before we all gather up here to ring the bell, um, I just want to announce if we could all remain after the ceremony for the benediction and the retiring of the colors, then we will go over to the Culture Center where uh, the Charleston Rotis Rotary have provided food for us. So if everyone who wants to join in on the bell ringing for peace would come on up and grab the rope, don't be shy. <laughs> You can go all the way up to the top there. Thank you. 